All right. Okay. Next, before we get into numerical methods, um, we are going to talk a little bit about Python. So also these lectures um, are provided on my website. Um, so between now and Thursday, I'd like to finish this, get you excited about Python, and then do a very basic Python tutorial, cover a bunch of things, and then ask you to repeat that tutorial in your homework. And on Thursday, if you know time allows it, we will start talking about numerical errors. Okay? But before and we get into numerical methods, um, who has who watches movies? No one watches TV. Okay. <laughs> okay. Have you seen the movie Ratatouille? Oh, yes. 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 Okay. So, do you remember? Uh, do you remember Chef Gusto and and his anyone can cook? Okay. So um, it's for those who haven't seen the movie um, Ratatouille. Can someone tell us about the movie? Okay. Why don't you stand up and and. Um, you know, project your voice to your colleagues and tell us about the movie Ratatouille. Okay, so really it's a movie about following your dreams, no matter where you're from. So you have um, Rami, who's a rat, and then he gets stranded, and then like, he starts like, he's tired of eating garbage. So, yeah. so well, he goes and takes over a restaurant and like controls a human. Was that green? Yeah. Yeah, this is his role model. Yeah, like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can cook. Yeah, but yeah, it's a weird concept. It's a it's a it's a, fu it's a fun movie. Um, essentially, just to kind of amend what they said, it's about this um, rat who was sick of eating garbage. Probably literally sick of eating garbage, but he had a great sense of smell and taste, and you know he would go and kind of pick mix flavors together and make great foods for his rat family. But he ended up getting out of the suburbs and he moved into the city and then ended up working with this human being, kind of trying this this soon to be cook, apparently a descendant of Chef Gusteau's. Um, anyway, the inspiration here is that anyone can cook. And as a side note, um, as you embark on school, many of you are probably living in dorms or you know away from their families, etc. Um, I, for I myself, lived away from my family. My family is ten thousand uh, miles away. Okay, and uh, you know I, I spent my first five years in the U.S. I came to the U.S. in two thousand five. But you can ask me more questions by the end of the semester about my life. But anyway, five. I spent I spent five years um, essentially in grad school living by myself, and that was like an emotional roller coaster, okay? So I know many of you can relate to that, and I can relate to it, but the only thing that made me survive is cooking. To this day, my Sundays, you know, I wake up in the morning, put my apron, you know, and go to the kitchen, and, you know, the kitchen is a mess, and I cook, you know, for the, my, my wife and I, and my son is like destroying things along the way. <laughs> you know, there's flour everywhere. He's like, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, Anyway, so we cook for the entire for the entire week. You know, we put things in Pyrex Tupperwares. We have we have over a hundred Pyrex Tupperwares, and you can we store them in the freezer. We eat all of them and then throw half of them by the end of the week because we're sick of eating the same thing. And then we go out and eat, you know, outside. But anyway, <laughs> cooking it's it's the you know just getting into um, um, cooking. It's like it's one of those essential things for humans eating. That's kind of the most. I feel like that's. That's what brings people together too. You know, two people get together, they kind of share, you know, you're eating something together and you can have great conversations. Anyway, so I wanted to create the equivalent of uh, the, the anyone, can, anyone can cook, is that anyone can code with Python, okay? And the idea is to encourage you um, that, you know, stop stop worrying about coding and programming and whatnot, just get you know, get immersed in it, you will eventually get to it. I, when I grew up, I had a friend, um, he's a very big computer scientist now in Canada. Um, he, he, he was doing programming at the age of like 13, 14. I had no idea what he was talking about. I would spend like hours looking at the monitor um, next to him and he was explaining things like I equal I plus one. I was like, wow, this doesn't make sense. I equal zero. But that doesn't make sense. Where's I equal I plus one? Anyway, um, so it took time for me to kind of comprehend these <coughs> concepts. So, but thank God I did that because now my entire life is built 
on my programming. I literally can want to insure my hands because if I cannot type, um, I cannot, I, I'm without a job. Anyway, but I wanted to create this thing here called the Anyone Can Code, and I'll share with you the, um, the link for uh, kind of this, for that. It's kind of a fun little thing. But first, let me talk to you about Python and Jupyter Notebooks and what we're going to be doing in this class. So first, we introduce Python. Why Python? Um, because um, there is a lot of Python in your future. I just grabbed um, these two stats um, before coming to class. Um, the IEEE Spectrum website, there's the link up there if you want to go, uh, go to it when, uh, when you look at the slides. It's ranked, um, pardon me, it ranked the importance of um, these programming languages based on um, uh, impact and jobs, etc. You can change the rate, rate ranking metric, and you will see. Pardon me. You will see that Python is always on top. It's the it's in the in very high demand. After it comes Java, C, C plus plus, R, JavaScript, C sharp, MATLAB, rank eighth. Okay. Now another stat from Indeed.com. I mentioned that earlier. As of January 2019. Um, Java has 66,000 jobs, and Python comes in next with 62,000 jobs. Okay, so Python is doing pretty good. You don't even see MATLAB in here. But, I mean, look at the difference between Python and JavaScript. Almost half, you know, almost half. There's so, so Python is in very high demand. So if you want to make a rational decision, not an emotional one. Oh, I like MATLAB because I learned MATLAB. No, you want to make a rational decision where to move next. Strategically, you should move to Python. You can go to Java, but Java is not going to be as nice for scientific computing things um, as Python. So we kind of decided we stick with Python. Okay, Python is free. It's very easy to get started with Python. It's very forgiving. I mentioned all of those earlier. And there's a significant community support around Python. And you can use Python in a web browser. Again, I'll come back to that in a second. OK, now what is this planet? Jupiter. Jupiter. OK, so what is the Jupiter notebook? Does anyone know what the Jupiter notebook is? Yeah. Google like Collab notebook share OK, that's one answer. Yeah. Uh, if you use the code and they have cells, uh -huh. and input, it'll load whatever that cell you can talk about. Output transcript Out, but whatever you but it does it by cells rather than just doing a whole thing at once. Okay, but, okay, but that, yes. Like, is there like public like, you know, like, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so a Jupyter notebook is uh, any other takers? Yes. Like just a browser based coding environment? Uh huh. Coding and multimedia environment. So a Jupyter notebook is a platform, is a framework, is a type of file where you can mix text, math, images, and code in the same document. So I go back to my example where students used to do um, Word documents and MATLAB, and they would submit both files separately. Imagine you can write MATLAB in your Word document and execute it in there and see the plots in line over there. That's what the Jupyter Notebook provides, OK? It's an open source. The best thing, though, is that you don't have to install anything. It's in a web browser. And we will show you how you where you can point your web browser to see this Jupyter Notebook platform. Okay, allows you to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualizations, explanatory text. Now, Jupyter Notebook has nothing to do with Python. It's a platform that allows to the mixing of multimedia equations and code in the same document. But it supports over 40 languages. You can do Fortran, Fortran in it. You can do, um, you know, other programming R in it. Um, Dr. Silcox uses Jupyter notebooks with R. We choose to use Python. The most popular is Python with Jupyter notebooks, but it has nothing to do with Python. We're using Python inside a Jupyter notebook, so you have to make make, make that distinction. Okay. Now, with Jupyter notebooks, you have to install and use it locally. Many of you, as you advance in the class, you're going to be wanting to have your own local installation, just in case you have no internet to access um, the central Jupyter Notebook that we provide to you here at the university. Anyway, the combination of Jupyter Notebooks and Python is really amazing. Okay, we'll call it nuclear. Now, can we make this easier? Yes. There is something called the Jupyter Hub, 
which puts Jupyter Notebooks on a server and provides access to users. So you don't have to install anything locally. All you have to do is essentially um, use your computer with the internet to access the Jupyter Hub. And there you go. You have a programming environment. I'll show you in a second. Um, and we will be using that exclusively unless you want some in a different arrangement. But I urge you to try it out first, okay? Give it, do the first couple of homeworks with Jupyter Notebooks and see their power, and then you're, you're never gonna look back. We've had a um, conver conversion rate of about 85% of students from MATLAB to Python over the last um, two installments of this course. So, you know, I, I wanna get to 100%, or, you know, if you're only gonna doing Python, that's even great. Okay, now do not confuse Python which is the core programming language with Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook, or Jupyter Hub, which is just a web application that allows you to use Python and text, et cetera, in it. Um, do not confuse this with what's called Anaconda, which we will talk about um, when we get to install Python. Anaconda is just a distribution of Python. Okay, if you wanna download Python locally, you can go and search for how to install Python. There's a bunch of distributions, the most popular of which is called Anaconda. I don't know why they named it Anaconda, maybe because of the, you know, the Python, Python Viper, whatever. It's called Anaconda, so don't ask me why. But it's a distribution, okay? You can use it to install Python and Jupyter on your local computer. Do you need Anaconda? No. If you, wanna, if you want to have Python and Jupyter Notebook locally, use Anaconda, otherwise, you don't have to worry about that. At least if you're not if you're not an advanced coder or programmer now, don't worry about Anaconda. And there are others that will come and talk. You will hear Spider and PyCharm. Those are just editors for Python code. They're just text editors. They have nothing to do with Python. They're just text editors that interface with Python. They allow you to debug. They allow you to run code in an integrated development environment. That's what we call. But they're just that text editors. What matters for us here is going to be the Jupyter Hub, okay, and the Jupyter Notebook. So the Jupyter Hub is the hub of Jupyter Notebooks so that you can access it um, through the internet. Okay, now I want you to point your web browser to this website. Juno, it means J Jupyter Notebook, .chpc.utah.edu. To explain to you the background for this way, CHPC is the Center for High Performance Computing at the University of Utah. In 2017, when I started uh, my faculty position here, I approached them and asked them to install the Jupyter Hub um, for the entire university. And that's what they did. So if you go and click on this link, let's see. Open link. Okay. This is what you're gonna see. You're gonna put your unit. Just put your unit and your university password. Oops. <laughs> Sign in. Then one five three nine four. Okay, it's still loading. We always have. Um, it's probably down because. Many people are trying to access it. Are you able to access it? <coughs> okay. Your server is starting up. Okay. This is what you're going to see. There's probably a huge load on it now that everyone wants to use it. We can, if you find that it is very slow, we can have a special installation for our class. So we have that privilege with the um, CHPC, but let's give this a chance. Um, and I want you to use this for your homework unless you want to install locally. Okay, this is what you see when you open up um, this Jupyter Hub, okay? See, all I needed was a web browser and internet <coughs> access. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna, okay. For some reason, this thing is, uh, the scaling on this thing is really bad for the, what you're gonna see here is um, your home directory. It will create a directory for you on the server. There are no files right now over there. But I'm gonna create a new file right now. And I'm gonna click new, Python 3 file. 
Now you see here the title Jupyter Notebook. It's a Jupyter Notebook with a Python backend for the programming language that this Jupyter Notebook is going to support, okay? And I'm going to name it. If I click here, I'm going to name it my oops, first Jupyter <coughs> Notebook. Okay? Feel free to follow. Okay. Now, this is only for illustration purposes. We'll dig a little bit deeper into uh, what you can do with the Jupyter Notebook. Okay? The idea of the Jupyter Notebook is that you have two types of cells. One cell is a text, equation, and multimedia cell. It's just like a part of the code, a part of the notebook where you can put text, multimedia, and equations. And there are code cells where you can write Python code in those cells, okay? So when you, you can click on the cell over here, and this is telling you, this is assuming that this cell is code by default. I can go and click here and change it to markdown. Markdown is the text, is the type of text that you can write in Jupyter Notebooks. Now, Markdown is another um, um, language for text. You don't have to worry about that. We'll give you a cheat sheet. But it's really easy. You can use it to create headers. You know, my first header. And if I click Shift Enter, it does this, OK? Or let me let's, let's say um, Newton's um, law. And let's say, you know, Newton's law is given by. Now I'm going to write an equation. And you will learn about how to write equations in the help sessions. We'll have um, the tutors help you out with writing math. We use what's called LaTeX to write math. It's really a very small um, learning curve to do LaTeX. But essentially, it gives you a very powerful way to write complex equations. Again, this is for illustration purposes. We're going to cover more of this a little bit later, but just to show you the power of this. Newton's law is given by, so I'm going to create an equation. Okay. I've done this a lot of times before, so it's um, fairly easy for me. Okay. Fra uh, let's see. You know, F is equal M F E F. Okay. Okay, now if I click Shift Enter, look at that. Right? That's pretty powerful. Okay? Now, imagine now, this you're doing a homework, you know, this has Newton's law and I want you to plot something or, or cover this or, you know, just plot a certain function. Let's say you want to plot, okay, so let's turn this other cell into a markdown cell. Huh? Plotting the sine function, okay? Our goal is to, this is what I want you, your reports to look like. Just explain to me what you're doing, okay? Even one word, even one sentence, as silly as it may sound, just write something, okay? As if you're taking notes for yourself. Right now, I want to illustrate to you how I'm going to mix text. I'm explaining to you what I'm doing, and then I'm going to write code to plot the sine function, okay? Um, our goal is to plot the function. Again, begin. What I'm going to do for the equations, I'm going to copy these and put them in here. And we want to write, we want to plot f of x equal sine omega x, okay? with different values for omega. Look at that. It's beautiful, okay? So now, I set out to tell you what I'm trying to do. Now, in this cell, when you see the word in, it's expecting input from you. And you can double check that this is a coding cell because it says code up there. Now, for those of you who are, don't know Python yet, I'm gonna, you're going to see some magic. Okay, don't worry about that. We will, this is again for illustration purposes. Um, I want to import um, compy and then import t and p in space um, from zero to ten. You understand what I'm doing here. I'm essentially creating a set of points x. 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. And then I'm going to evaluate the sine function on those points. 
and then I'm gonna plot it, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, um, omega one is equal one, omega, oops, omega two is equal two times two pi, and then omega three is equal <coughs> three times pi, okay? And then plt dot plot, I want to plot np dot sine omega one x times x, okay? So let's start with omega one. Give it a second, you see that star over there, it shows that it's still processing. Okay, LT dot show. It's not showing for some reason. Okay, my plot as PLT. Okay, so now I am running into problems over here. For some reason, matplotlib is um, not showing. Okay. Apparently, we have. So, what I did now here discreetly, I googled the following. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me. PLT.show not working in Jupiter. There you go. The first, first instance, let me see what they're trying to tell us, is that, and I should have remembered this, you have to put this thing called, um, this is called the magic, actually, called matplotlib inline. Essentially, this tells Jupiter, this tells matplotlib that you are plotting within Jupiter. And I'm running out of time. I just want to do this first. There you go. Okay, so I plotted this. Now I want to plot x and mp dot sine omega 2 times x. And then you see the other function now. We want to label the axis, etc. But this is the power of the Jupiter notebook. 